Thank you. Let me let me tell you how this is going to work. We're going to be in a situation where once your your checking account reaches a threshold of ten thousand dollars worth of activity, then all of your information is going to start going to the IRS. To put that in perspective, the average family's checking account activity is about $61,000. So that's virtually everybody. So it's going to go to the IRS. They're going to hire 87,000 new agents. Part of those agents are going to be looking at that information, uh, again, at a cost of $80 billion. At that point, if they see something that they don't like, they're going to start sending you a threatening letter. This is happening now if you run afoul of the IRS. The problem is you get on the phone, you try and call them, they'll answer about 40% of the time. If you are fortunate enough where they answer the phone, it's not uncommon at all to be put on hold for an extended period of time. They actually have a thing after about 45 minutes. They have what they call a courtesy disconnect where they hang up on you because they're trying to preserve your time. I was visiting with the accountants uh, a couple weeks ago. One of them literally important case trying to get through. They, the, the IRS won't see you in person. All of this is done by phone. Important case was on the phone for four hours. They tried to hang up on her and she literally broke into tears. So these are very real things. The last thing that we need to be doing is giving the IRS 87,000 new agents, $80 billion. Uh, there's lots of things that we could be doing for the IRS to help them with their customer service to make them more effective. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, stuff going on now that, that with the current resources that they have, that they could be much more effective in collecting. But again, this is certainly not the route to go. It wasn't too long ago that uh, uh, the IRS was, was uh, targeting conservatives. Uh, now we're seeing a situation through this Build Back uh, Broke bill, or whatever we call it, uh, that they're going to be targeting the vast majority of the American population. Thank you. I don't think the argument is whether or not people should pay their taxes. Certainly they should do that at all levels. The question is how do you enforce that? People should, could keep, should keep all of our laws, but we don't have people coming into our homes, you know, searching around, trying to find evidence that we've done something wrong. The, the idea of you hitting a threshold in your bank account that was originally $600, which would include everybody, now it's up to 10,000, average family 61,000. The idea of your financial tra transactions at that point going to the IRS is wrong. You know, that's, that's your business. Unless they have evidence that you've done something wrong. The other problem is once you centralize that information, the IRS, the rest of our agencies are notorious for actually making it such that that information is not breachable. So instead of it being disseminated all over the country at various banks, all of a sudden it goes to one centralized location, and that's a recipe for the Chinese, the Russians, whoever, uh, for some industrious hacker to get that information. So there's all kinds of things that are wrong about this. Your colleague pointed out that since 2010 there's been a reduction in funding of IRS. That's been done on a very bipartisan basis. Those were Democrat and Republican uh, administrations and Congress agrees this is not been a this has not been a partisan issue both Democrats and Republicans have agreed they've done a lousy job and that's why they've chosen not to fund them so the idea of hassling and then two not following up in a in a in a meaningful way uh, where the other part of the hassle is just enduring the crisis that comes with that as you're in the process of contacting them and working it out is simply not right.